Statement of John Davis regarding his time as a tenant in apartment block B of Redacted Apartment Complex. Recording of statement is placed on May 23rd, 2012. Recording begins with some technical difficulties. Mr. Davis, welcome. Please, have a seat. Save the pleasantries for someone who will fall for whatever pathetic facade you've created. I know what you are and what you are capable of. This is my statement. Read it if you'd like. I'll be taking my leave. John, wait. Hold on. No, I'm sick and tired of... What are you... Put that thing down. Have you gone mad? Get, get away from me, you psycho. I... Oh, I'm very sorry about that. I believe that bit of footage got, um, corrupted. But I do still have Mr. Davis's statement. Allow me to proceed. Honey, it's what makes the world go round. And what makes people like me stay in apartments like the one I had been in. When you don't have money, you settle for whatever you can get. Especially if it's cheap. You settle for floorboards that feel like they might give out at any moment. And you settle with your roommates being the rats just as malnourished as you. When you live in a place like that, you do not expect to be surrounded by the most well-mannered of neighbors. But I was not prepared with what I was met with. I could make peace with the rats and the squeaking of the floorboards with every step. But I cannot stand the obnoxious woman that lived in the apartment above mine. In the part of the room that was my ceiling and her floor, there was a watery stain in the center of the room. When I moved in, it was barely noticeable, but it grew with every passing day. My apartment block was small, and pretty much everyone knew each other, mostly by activities and less by names and faces. There was the young couple who always listened to rock music a little too loud. There was always an old man who never picked up after his dog when they went on walks. There was the frat kid who would always come home in the middle of the night barely able to stand. Trust this because no one, and I mean no one, knew a thing about the woman who lived above me. The only thing people knew was that she was a woman. I had held myself back for months from going up there and interrogating whatever strange woman was in that building. I could prevent myself not a day longer once small drops of water began to trickle down the ceiling and onto the wooden floor. Each hollow tap brought a new pang of anger with it. I rose from my couch and practically ran through the door. I walked through the building like a bulldozer until I reached her apartment. My fist came pounding again and again on the door. Every time my fist connected with the door, I felt just a little bit better. Eventually, I heard shuffling of feet and the sliding of a deadbolt. She cracked the door just the slightest bit open. A sunken, bloodshot eye stared back at me from the inky black void that was her room. Can I help you? Something has been leaking through your ceiling for ages now. It's dripping down into my apartment. Deal with it, or I will call the landlord. She paused for a moment. No. Then, a shaky prune of a hand reached out and shut the door. The strangest thing, though, I could have sworn her hand was shimmering in the light and dripping something onto the floor. No. What could she mean, no? It was ridiculous. I called up the landlord that night, but he didn't answer. I didn't think much of it at the time. The guy spent most of his time running around like a chicken with its head cut off, so I just assumed he'd respond when he, got, when he was free. I just... I forced that thought for days. I called him again and again, but he didn't pick up. I gave up and stormed back upstairs once more. If he wouldn't do anything, then I would. I'm a grown man. I was more than capable of taking matters into my own hands. I began to slam my fist on the doors once more. When my hand touched it, it simply swung open loosely. I peered inside. At first, I was hesitant. The smell of mold and the never-ending stream of water droplets cascading onto my head refueled my rage and I pushed forward. One foot at a time as I entered her apartment. Instantly, the smell of mold hit my nose. The stale air hit me with such an impact that I staggered back for a moment. I pinched my nose and pressed forward, trying my hardest not to breathe through my nose. I stepped onto her carpeted bedroom floor, and I immediately heard something wrong. Wet, disgusting squelches erupted from the floor and consumed the room. I looked down and realized that the carpet was... I looked down and realized the carpet was completely soaked through. It was freshly wet with a mixture of the s It was freshly wet and the mixture of the sound and smell caused me to gag. 
I suppose this is the source of, of the puddle on my ceiling and that awful smell. Before I could even wonder what made the f floor this wet, my question was answered. All around the room were buckets, bottles, cans, and any and all containers for liquids that had once contained water. Some were still full, some empty, some empty, and some, some were, some were in between. Posted on her walls were photographs of water bottles, canteens, and other similar things. What in the escaped my lips? What could any of these possibly be? I scanned the home for her, only to be met with more watery imagery and a lack of a homeowner. I eventually gave up and decided to resign myself to my room. I took my to my bed after a, I took to my bed and checked my phone. My landlord had responded. After what felt like an eternity of being, oh my god, I'm messing up my words so much today. <clears throat> After what felt like an eternity of being ghosted, he finally managed a reply. It was not anything like what I expected or wanted, though. You shouldn't have gone in there. The text read. My heart sank and I began to hyperventilate, but I tried to shove it in, out in the back of my mind. I tried to shove it out of my mind. For the next couple of days. I wish I could have said everything went back to normal, and I lived happily ever after, but it did not. There was no sunshine and rainbows awaiting me at the end of this tunnel. I turned on the tap the next morning to brush my teeth, only for a disgusting thick liquid to come oozing out of the faucet. I gagged and shut it off. I talked to the other tenants, and they all experienced the same thing when, they, when attempting to use the building's water. When I had been sprayed with a thick coat of the substance when attempting to take a shower, and one had attempted to pour a glass of water, only to be met with a very unpleasant taste. They all had their stories. We angrily stormed to the landlord's place and we demanded to see him. He came out with a confused look on his face. He was perplexed as to what had happened, but he knew. He had to have known. He had to. He confessed that he didn't know no matter what, no matter how much we shouted and berated him. Listen, I don't know anything. I haven't gotten or sent a single one of the texts you're talking about, he pleaded. He resigned, taking us to the water tower to look over everything. We walked back up, up we walked back to the building and up onto the roof, where, strangely enough, I thought to myself, anyone could have opened it whenever they had wanted, and he continued to open it. Upon opening it, inside lay a mangled, bloody body. The old, grizzly, the old grizzled body of a woman who lived on the floor above mine. She lay there, lifeless, with a haunting smile. Her grin was ear to ear, but it showed pure bliss. I suppose I know now what the substance in the water was. Statement ends. Call John back in. In that case, ready an extraction team. I need to have a little chat with Mr. Davis.